in terms of the number of young people signing up um, and the number of opportunities that are available to them. There's definitely far more young people looking for the volunteering placements than there are placements available for their age groups. So it started a bit of a conversation in our office about what we can do to try and support organisations um, to make more volunteering places available to young people um, and also to, to um, just to go over some of those the maybe misconceptions about what it means to have young volunteers in your organisations. I think some people are, are quite nervous about it. So we thought we'd do a little bit of myth busting, a um, little bit of working through what some of those barriers are um, and also to hear from some organisations who have um, been really successful at implementing youth volunteering uh, within their organisation. Um, so that's, that's the kind of background to the session today and the reason why uh, we thought we'd run it. Um, hopefully you've all had an agenda email to you um, so the breakdown of the session really will be we're going to hear from some fantastic young people who have been volunteering um, and their support worker who's been making that happen there'll be a chance for you to ask them some questions we'll have some breakout rooms as well where we will split into smaller smaller groups um, where you can get to know each other a bit better and and start those conversations about um what are you already doing in terms of youth volunteering? How could you grow that and make that bigger? Or if you've not done any, um, had any youth involvement within your volunteering programmes, how could you get started? Um, so that's that's where we're going today. So first of all, um, I'm going to invite uh, Lisa from Nelson's Journey to, um, to speak to you now. And she's accompanied by two of her wonderful young people. Um, and I can't see Lisa on the screen because everyone's got buried somewhere. So I'm hoping she's still here. <laughs> I am. I am oh, still here. <laughs> I am a bit nervous, but I haven't run away. So um, <laughs> all is good. So hi, everyone. Um, my name's Lisa Wright, and I'm one of the child bereavement support workers at Nelson's Journey. I'm also the coordinator of Nelson's Journey's Young Volunteer Scheme but I have only been the coordinator since January. So um, please be kind today and um, I'm more than happy to do my best to answer any questions that you have, um, but I'm still learning um, aspects of how the Nelson's Journey Young Volunteer Scheme runs myself. However, I have been a member of staff at Nelson's Journey for three years. So. I've got a really good overview from a member of staff's point of view as to how Nelson's Journey's Young Volunteer Scheme um, runs and also the impact that it has on our service delivery and how our young volunteers contribute to the development of the charity and its services, but also how they help to um, promote and in some cases organise and support fundraising events that Nelson's Journey um, runs. I, prior to working at Nelson's Journey, I was a volunteer for Nelson's Journey and while I was an adult volunteer, I was one of the dedicated adult volunteers that supported the youth panel and the young volunteer scheme. So again, I've got an insight into how the Young Volunteer Scheme has um, worked over the years. So I'm going to give you a little bit of an overview of our Young Volunteer Scheme and how it works at Nelson's Journey. Um, and then Ruben and Amelia, who are two of our Young Volunteers, have kindly volunteered to speak to you this afternoon about their role and experience of volunteering for Nelson's Journey. So our Young Volunteer Scheme um, originated in 2012 and ultimately the charity wanted to involve children and young people in the work of Nelson's Journey and we recognised it was going to be really important to hear the voices of bereaved children and young people in Norfolk in helping us to develop our services. Many of our young volunteers have experienced bereavement themselves, but not all of them. Um, some of them have received support from Nelson's Journey. So some of our young volunteers have had bereavement support from Nelson's Journey. And then as a result of having support from the charity themselves, they've chosen to apply to become a young volunteer. 
other members of the Young Volunteer Scheme simply want to make a positive contribution and um, help to support the charity's vision and aims. So initially we had, um, we established the youth panel which consists of 12 young people and their ages range between 11 and 17. In August 2013, we extended our young volunteer scheme. So we have a group of 12 young volunteers who are known as youth panel members and they meet more regularly and they vote and make decisions on projects and decide how they will spend the budget that the Young Volunteers Scheme has been um, awarded through the Shellroy Trust. So for the first three years, our Young Volunteers Scheme didn't receive any funding, but we've been very fortunate to have been able to receive funding for our Young Volunteers Scheme. And this makes a massive difference because it contributes to um, financing transportation. So if young people um, can't access meetings other than by taxi, we can use some of our funding for transportation, for um, costs at meetings, but also the young volunteers use the funding and their budget to decide on um, projects and resources that they want to develop. So our young volunteers ultimately help us, we hope um, and have seen over the years to provide a service that is really effective for the young people that we support, but also they share ideas and um, for projects and resources. They've been instrumental in developing some of our um, resources such as our Smiles and Tears app, and our Smiles and Tears gift box. The Purple Picnic, which is an annual fundraising event for Nelson's Journey, was the idea of our young volunteers. So they contribute in a whole variety of different ways. There is no formal training for our young volunteers, but they're supported in a variety of ways. As well as myself as coordinator, we have five dedicated adult volunteers who support the youth panel members and our young volunteers. So they're adult volunteers for the charity, but they have specifically applied to support our young volunteers as part of their adult volunteer role. And they attend meetings and events that the young volunteers are also volunteering and helping out at. All of our young volunteers have the opportunity to complete the Momentum Youth Award for volunteering. And I'm pleased to say the overwhelming majority of them do complete this award. And as well as this award recognizing their contributions and the efforts and participation, we also have our own Achievements Award. So all the young volunteers at Nelson's Journey, in the same way that the adult volunteers are awarded, can work towards bronze, silver, gold, and more recently, platinum awards, which are based on the number of hours that they've volunteered for the charity. Historically, pre-COVID, all of our meetings have obviously happened in person, and they take place every school holiday, at Smiles House. Since the pandemic, we've been meeting on Zoom like everybody else. And we haven't necessarily met as often or for as long. And frustratingly, I'm sure in some ways for the young volunteers, there have been less opportunities for them to volunteer, but they've been really instrumental in, in helping us to review our service. For example, they've taken part in focus groups which have helped us to move from in-person support to online support over the past year. And they regularly give us feedback on resources that we're using in online appointments. And obviously, as in today, still being able to contribute and volunteer at events, um, although they've been online as opposed to in-person. We do um, give all of our young volunteers an information pack, which is a bit like a handout. 
And obviously working with children and young people, it's really important that they feel safe in their role. So all of the young volunteers will sign a code of conduct and a confidentiality agreement because of the sensitive nature of the work that Nelson's Journey delivers. Um, we obviously want them to feel safe, but we also want um, them to respect the sensitivity of perhaps some of the information that they might be um, party to. And all of our young volunteers are aware of our safeguarding policy and who the designated safeguarding leads are and the alternate leads within the organisation. We do have um, a code word that our young volunteers can use. So if they're ever in a situation, whether that's an event or in a meeting where they feel uncomfortable in any way, all of the adults working with the young volunteers are aware of the code word and they can use that code word as a way of communicating with us that they you know, need some help and support or feel uncomfortable in, in that situation. Um, we always ask the young people who are interested in applying to become a young volunteer to complete an application form and obviously we ask their parents to complete a consent form which covers things like attending events, photo commission, um, being able to use photos for social media purposes, um, transportation and although they don't have a, a formal interview as such they'll always have a meeting with the coordinator prior to attending their, their first meeting. I'm going to hand over to um, Ruben first, I think we agreed, all being well. I think he's now on his phone because his laptop was running a bit slow. Um, Ruben and Amelia have um, kindly volunteered to speak to you today about their roles and um, hopefully listening to them will give you a, a much clearer um, and more personal insight really into the experience of um, our young volunteers. Thanks Ruben. Hello, uh, I'm Ruben. Uh, Nelson's, Nelson's Journey is a charity. It's not a glamorous one, but it is a very important one. It helps confused, upset, and in most cases, angry children, trying to understand why their parents, brother, sister, or anyone else close to them have passed away, not coming back. I remember the first time someone I knew was going through grief. We were 10, he just lost his mum. He couldn't, he couldn't believe it. The school had to send him away for two weeks because they didn't know what to do with him. So he felt very isolated and lonely at this time. And no one should feel the way he did, but there are right now. But thanks to Nelson's journey, there are more awareness for, from like purple picnics, smiles and tea gift boxes, and more other ideas. Um, I, have jo I joined Nelson's journey as a young volunteer about a year ago. And since I can honestly say I have gained confidence from meetings and speaking to the amazing individuals at the youth panels. They treat us with respect and acknowledge our ideas, no matter what it turn, what we like say. Um, everyone deserves help and is what Nelson's Journey Youth Panel have been doing for nine years and will continue. Thank you for listening. Thanks, Ruben. I'll hand over to Amelia. Hi. Um, so, hi, my name is Amelia and I am a young volunteer with Nelson's Journey. Um, I personally decided that I was going to become a young volunteer after going to a residential at Hillside. Um, I was about 11 at the time and I was encouraged by some of the, um, by some of the adult volunteers to join. And I'm definitely glad I did because um, it's been amazing being part of the Young Volunteers and I've loved every aspect of it. My favourite part has definitely been helping out at events and seeing all of our hard work and planning coming together. It's also amazing to see all of the children and young people having fun and enjoying everything that we've put so much work towards. And it's always an amazing feeling when we get a project that we have been working on for ages finished. Um, I love the creativity and all of the amazing range of ideas that every member of the youth panel comes up with. A specific event that stood out to me was the 
was the purple picnic that we held at the Woodward. It was really amazing to see all of the people and families and so many people all coming together at that event. Um, personally, I've gained so much from being a part of the youth panel. I'm a lot more confident and more outgoing than I was before. And I know this is definitely because of the amazing atmosphere and the support that I've received from being a young volunteer with Nelson's Journey. Um, I think that it, in us being young people ourselves, other young people going through Nelson's Journey support and attending events feel a lot more included and like they're not alone, um, since most of us, just like them, have been through bereavement. Before I became a young volunteer, I attended a few events myself where there were young volunteers helping out. Um, and when there were the young volunteers helping out it made me feel a lot more included as I knew that there were people who had been through the same thing as me and were doing something good on account of their bereavement. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks Amelia. I'll hand over to Amy. <laughs> That was brilliant. Thanks ever so much, guys. Um, I think that that just said in much better words than I could have put it, what the benefits are for, for young people who are who are doing the volunteering and the, the confidence and the skills that they can gain from it, but also um, the, the benefit to organisations as well. And I think that's fantastic that, like Amelia just said, that you can, you know, young Nelson's Journey can, can model um, the way that they work with young volunteer with young people through their young volunteers and showcase what what kind of organization they are um and it just has that that real win-win for everyone doesn't it um so if has anyone there's a lot of love in the chat for reuben and amelia i think there's um you've got loads of lovely thank yous in there so that's um but has anyone got any questions that they'd like to put to either lisa or um to reuben or amelia about their volunteering or um how the program has been developed anything like that you can either you can um there's a if you look at the reactions box at the bottom there's a sort of, uh, hand up kind of tool um or you can um just ask a question in the chat okay we've got one question from abby um how did it first start with the youth volunteering panel lisa are you able to answer that i know you were weren't in post at the time <clears throat> so yeah, I, I wasn't I wasn't in place at the time, um, and I wasn't a volunteer for Nelson's Journey at the time either. But um, my um, ex colleague Lorna Vise was the person who established the youth panel in two thousand and twelve. I don't know whether initially, as a charity, um, we had a campaign to recruit young volunteers, or whether the support workers, which is one way in which we recruit um, young volunteers now, were asked to perhaps identify young people on their caseloads when they had reached the end of their Nelson's Journey support to talk to them about whether they would be interested in applying to become a young volunteer. So one way that we currently recruit young volunteers at the moment is if we have worked directly with children and young people who we feel would, you know, um, benefit from being part of the scheme, who have the skills and qualities perhaps that, you know, will help us to continue to develop and move the charity forward when they've completed their bereavement support, because obviously we want to make sure they're in the right place for them emotionally to become a young volunteer for the charity. Um, we speak to them about becoming a young volunteer. So I'm really sorry I can't answer that specifically, um, but I would imagine it was probably something that was done in a, in a combination of ways. Um, mm. Certainly, we're hoping to recruit more young volunteers over the coming months. We have got some new young volunteers that have joined since the pandemic. So we have got um, three young volunteers now who we haven't met in person yet because of COVID. Um, but we also are planning a social media um, campaign to encourage young people to apply to become a young volunteer because hopefully we will be able to meet in person again later in the year. Would it be fair to say that the, the volunteering programme has kind of grown over time? You know, it didn't start off with as many young people as 
got now. I guess it was quite a lot smaller and has, and has just kind of expanded as you've developed new ways of working and, and got better at what you're doing. Mm, yeah, initially it was just 12 youth panel members. Um, so we have 12 youth panel members and then a number of young volunteers. And as youth panel members turn 18 and leave the scheme, the youth panel members invite young volunteers to join the youth panel. So it's kind of like a rolling programme. Um, not all of our young volunteers stay on board until they reach 18, but a, a large percentage of them do. And some of our young volunteers have also um, moved on to become adult volunteers for charity as well. Oh, that's great. Uh, another question we had was about the training that's offered to young volunteers. So we don't have a formal program of training, but um, what we're able to do when we meet in person is our meetings that take place during the school holidays are a full day. And having the support of some dedicated adult volunteers, part of those days involve one-to-one -one support. So for example, during the course of um, a meeting, which as I say, can be, a, can be a full day, we'll meet collectively, but it's also possible for us to spend time with the individual young volunteers one-to-one. -one. Um, some of that time, for example, might be setting goals with them in, with regards to the Momentum Youth Award. Some of it will be um, involved just talking to them about the things that they you know, might be finding difficult or the things that they feel are going well, but they all, but we also include things like um, in the past, the young volunteers have received some media training. So we often involve other professionals and organizations in upskilling our young volunteers. And because they often talk, for example, on the radio or they give talks to um, organizations who might be considering fundraising for Nelson's journey, things like the media training that they've received in the, the past has been really invaluable for them in enabling them to fulfill their role, but also sort of personally, it's helping them to develop a whole range of, of skills that will benefit them in years to come as well. I don't know whether Ruben and Amelia want to mention anything specific in relation to sort of training or any opportunities you've had. Yeah, I, I don't mind. Um, so a, a few things I've got to mention. So um, with the specialist thing, we the best one was, was we got for media. We got a um, the person who used to manage the Norwich City uh, Instagram account, and he came in and he taught us quite a lot and uh, about setting up an Instagram account for uh, Nelson's journey. That was really good, and I've because of volunteering for Nelson's journey, also, I also have uh, UCAS points So from my school. So that's really like an opportunity to go to university. So it's not just local stuff that volunteering helps for. It's like also a, a requirement in some points. And that's not the reason I joined, but it really does like help you. And I also got a different uh volunteering place and that and i did mention that and that really like helps in situations and as well as for interviews and stuff like that i don't know if you've got anything you'd like to add amelia no i think everything's been said Great. Yeah, that's that's really helpful. And, and um, Ruben's points brings us on to the next question, actually, which is about how important is the Achievement Award and the, the, both the Momentum Youth Award and the other awards that, that you do internally? How important are they to young people's motivation for volunteering? Um, I don't know if Amelia and Ruben, you want to pick that up first. So was that part of your motivation? Or? Um, yeah, I can say something. Um, with the when I first joined um, with Nelson's Jenny, it was ages ago I think I was like 11 or 12 or something so I don't really I don't know if I even knew about all of the um different achievement awards and everything that we could get but since since obviously being involved in Nelson's journey and everything um there's an award that we get where 
all of our um, hours are counted up and then we get either like bronze or silver or gold for our hours that are counted up with that and that really helps to motivate me because a lot of the time when we get given an opportunity or something I'm kind of thinking oh that's an opportunity for me to get more hours and then maybe I could get my gold and things like that so that does help motivate me as well obviously I love doing events and I love doing things like this but it's kind of an extra thing where you're kind of like oh I can do this as well so yeah they really help to motivate me so it wasn't the thing that made you sign up in the first place but it keeps you going yeah. if, if, if at times you might be thinking about oh I'm not sure if I fancy volunteering or oh, it's, it's getting a bit stale it sort of helps reinvigorate it yeah that- definitely definitely yeah right uh, Lisa or Reuben, did you want to add anything on that question? You got anything you want to add, Reuben? No, I think everything's been covered. It just is great to keep your track of your hours, and that's it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just just to add, um, to give you an idea of the sort of number of hours that some of our young volunteers contribute. Um, as Amelia mentioned, we have gone silver and gold, which um, are awarded annually for. 50, 100 and 150 hours of volunteering and I think it was in 2017 we recognised that um, one of our young volunteers had actually completed in excess of 300 hours of volunteering for Nelson's journey so that's some going so we created a platinum award for any of our young volunteers that volunteer for 300 plus hours and all the um, volunteers get a little pin badge um, when they achieve their bronze, silver and gold award and those young volunteers that achieve their platinum award also get an engraved um, paperweight as you know recognition of that amazing achievement. Yeah and I went to a prize giving event um, that Nelson's Jenny ran a few years ago um, pre-COVID and when when we could all you know sit in a, in a big marquee together um, at a big hotel and it was just a, it was a really lovely event and it was lovely to see the way that they recognized each young person's contribution they were calling them up onto the stage and they had special guests um, to actually hand out these these paperweights and the badges um, and it just adds that extra feeling of achievement as well um, and the so the Momentum Youth Award as well there's there are um, certificates for that um, so there are there are three areas for the youth award um, that, that young people can complete at their own pace they have to complete five hours of volunteering for each section that acts a little bit like a Duke of Edinburgh's award for people who are familiar with with that kind of model um, only on a much uh, much smaller scale so it's much much more light touch um, can can actually be quite a good introduction to uh, volunteering awards for young people who've maybe maybe not quite ready to do something like a Duke of Edinburgh um, but they complete their, their personal development challenge, um, making a difference to your community and working with others. Those are the three areas. They do five hours of volunteering in each section and they set their own goals. So for a young person's personal development challenge, it might, it's something that is a challenge for them personally. Um, for some young people, it might be actually, I've never done any volunteering at all, even being in a room with other people um, as part of this this volunteering experience that I'm going to be embarking on is a huge challenge and I'm nervous about it. So their challenge might just be to be confident enough uh, to speak in a meeting. That's something that is is a challenge for them. Um, Same with working with others. If it's something they've never done before, it might be that their challenge is just just to be there and be present for at least five meetings or something like that. Um, So they set their challenge beforehand, they do their hours of volunteering and then they complete um, a reflective log where they, they get to write down what they've enjoyed, um, anything that they maybe haven't enjoyed, what they've gained from the experience. So that might be um, skills or new friends or anything that's made a difference to them. Um, and once they've completed that reflective log, they then get a certificate for that section. There's one certificate for each area and then an overall certificate at the end when they've completed all three. Um, so that just uh, just to answer someone in the chat asking about what they actually receive as, as um, as the award. So there's the Nelson's Journey in-house pin badges and um, um, paperweights, but then also the, the Momentum Youth Award certificates. And the Momentum Youth Award is open to 
any young people in Norfolk um, aged 11 to 25. So if you do want to find out a bit more, we'll send out loads of resources um, to everyone attending after this session, but that's one of the things we'll send out to you. Any more questions uh, from anyone before we move on to our breakout rooms? Amy, there was a question about recruitment methods from Abby Clark. Oh, sorry, I missed that one. Um, oh yes, what recruitment methods do you use? Um, they've obviously been very effective. Um, well, as I mentioned, we, we often talk to the young people who have received bereavement support from Nelson's journey. Um, sometimes they might be they might be young people who are interested in contributing and giving something back to the charity. Quite a lot of the children and young people that we support and their families um, perhaps organise a fundraiser for Nelson's journey as a way of saying thank you after they've received some direct support from the charity, but also uh, some young people know about our young volunteer scheme and choose to apply to become a young volunteer. We are going to have um, our sort of funding and marketing team are going to organise some social media posts for us, probably over the Easter holiday period, where we can encourage young people who want to volunteer for Nelson's Journey to apply to become a young volunteer and as I say they don't necessarily have to have a personal experience of bereavement it can help them to relate and identify with the charity's aims more easily if they do but it's it's not a prerequisite they don't have to have had a personal experience of, of bereavement to apply to become a young volunteer but there are main um, sort of methods of recruiting young volunteers do you ever have young volunteers who bring friends as well? Is that something that happens? Yeah, actually, that yes, that is the case. So we have got um, some young volunteers at the moment who have talked about their experiences with school friends, for example, and, and others that they know who have then um, applied to become young volunteers themselves. So, so yeah, so actually sometimes the, the young volunteers recruit on the charity's behalf in that respect. And Ruben and Amelia, I don't know if you've got any ideas about, um, just for some of the organisations here who might be thinking about how to recruit young volunteers, um, any ideas for where they might get started? Where, where might you hear about an opportunity? Uh, uh, I'd say schools are really important because it's a place where you can like it sounds really bad but you can like target at certain years so this way like you can look for certain year groups and look for certain ways through that and also it's not just about getting directly from those classes it's about making sure people know about that opportunity because i i knew about it for a while because they came to my school and then I only joined a year ago. So it's not about joining immediately because some people will want to join later on. Well, I... Yeah, that's a great point. Thanks. Yeah, um, kind of touching on um, what Ruben said, something like maybe assemblies in schools might be a good idea because obviously that's a way of like teaching um, young people all about the charity or the organization and then obviously saying and you can come help us <laughs> it's kind of like a way that might help people be more informed and everything about that mm. yeah i think that, that makes a lot of sense yeah thank you okay. any more questions from anyone i'll give you another couple of minutes just sorry i've can... just i'm sorry just thought of yeah, I've just thought of something else as well. Um, we we have information on our website about becoming a volunteer for Nelson's Journey. Um, so whether that's adult volunteers or young volunteers, we have um, a section on our website where people can read about the opportunity to volunteer for the charity and information about you know what the role involves. And, um, and information about how to apply. And what we always do, if, 
if, for example, a young person is applying to become a young volunteer and they are someone who's had direct support from the charity, we still actively ask them to contact us themselves. So rather than the support worker um, go to their sort of perhaps final one-to-one -one session with an application form, we give them the information about how to apply because that's one way of ensuring that they, they are genuinely interested and committed to that role. So at the moment, the information on our website um, and historically we've asked children or young people to either call or email our inquiries um, email address to request an application pack. But we've got information about how to become a volunteer on our website as well, which we can signpost people to. Brilliant, thank you. There's been another question that's just come in about um, links to the Duke of Edinburgh's award. Um, could, could their volunteering qualify for the community aspect of the Duke of Edinburgh's award and how best to link it together? Um, so I know that um, what I was talking earlier about young people um, signing onto the voluntary Norfolk portal looking for opportunities, a lot of them are motivated by looking for a placement for their community aspect of their Duke of Edinburgh's award. So there's, there is definitely a link there. Um, I don't know, Lisa, if you've had any young people who have done Duke of Edinburgh as part of their volunteering. Oh, Ruben's put his hand up. Oh, go for it, Ruben. You go first. Uh, I, I have. Um, so this, before we came, before we left for school, before we left school a few months ago, I just finished mine. So I haven't, you know, got anything, but I, I, I have just done it. So, and it's really helpful because you know that you're putting work like effort in and you know you're like not getting something out of it but you like get something out of it because you know you've helped the help other people yeah right. um, this is a shameless plug <laughs> am, I am i allowed to do that <laughs> so we one of our youth panel members at the moment is working towards his Duke of Edinburgh award so he is volunteering his time to organise a fundraising event in aid of Nelson's journey so he is he's been organising and you may have even seen it in the um, local media actually he's been organising a gaming marathon which is going to take place over the weekend of the 26th to the 29th of March off the top of my head um, but he has used his time to plan um, this event and he has been interviewed on Radio Norfolk and there was an article in the EDP recently to promote the event um, but the time that he has spent in sort of organising the fundraiser is going to be able to contribute to his um, Duke of Edinburgh award. So I know, I know historically, although I don't know all of the details, I know a number of our young volunteers have fulfilled that aspect of their Duke of Edinburgh award through their volunteering for Nelson's journey, but only being the coordinate, having been the coordinator for a very short amount of time, um, you know, the, the young the youth panel member that's currently organising this event is um, is certainly doing that as as we speak. Yeah, I I think um Having supported young people to do DVE like years and years ago now, I'm, I'm my information's a bit out of date. So I know they've changed the award more recently, um, but I think one of the best ways to link in is probably, um, like Ruben suggested earlier, to contact schools because they often run the Duke of Edinburgh within the school, um, and it might be that there are young people who want to do the award and need, and are looking for placement. So organisations here who are looking to recruit young volunteers. Could be a very easy way in if you find out whether the school is is running the award um, i think that uh, there's a question in the chat about uh, who acts as the assessor uh, for those on dv i don't know if you've had to do that yet lisa yeah I, I haven't had to do it as yet um but that is something that lorna who was the previous coordinator would have done so she would have signed off um you know those, those hours or however it's recorded that's something that i haven't haven't done yet, but obviously will be doing for the, for the youth panel member that's currently working towards his DV. 
yeah and all young people who are signed up for DV will have um someone coordinating that whether it's someone within their school or externally so if there's any organizations that haven't done that before and are worried about having to sign off young people there's there's normally someone that they can contact right um i'll give it oh tracy's got a hand up tracy do you want to uh, come in hi yeah it was just about um the dv and the volunteering um i run methyl juice center and we are located in meth world um ic the academy meth world's grounds and we have for um two consecutive years had students from the academy volunteering at the youth centre as part of their DV. And it is, it's quite a simple process to sign off um, at the end. So it's obviously you can get support, but it is, it's quite self-explanatory really. So it's a really, it's a really good thing for both um, the volunteer group and the volunteers. Brilliant, thanks, that's really helpful. Okay, if there's any more questions, uh, speak now or forever hold your peace. Um, if not, we will move to breakout rooms.